Okay, so now we're going to move on to chapter 14, which is about cancer and aging. So the first question is, what is cancer? Cancer is the unregulated growth and division of somatic cells. So we're talking somatic cells, not germ cells here. So what are some consequences of a somatic cell mutation? Well, we talked about mutations in the last um, chapter. Uh, a lot of times, nothing happens. It's perfectly harmless silent mutation, and we learned about the mechanism by which that can happen. Um, if it happens early in embryogenesis and the mutation is an, you know, an important gene that's necessary for life, the, usually it's lethal, so the uh, embryo won't develop into a child. If it's later in development, um, a mutation may only affect a few cells, or you know, it may even be harmless. It's, it's hard to say. However, some mutations um, that happen, and they're not talking about necessarily during development here, this can happen when you're, you know, 60 years old, some mutations cause cancer. And as I said, cancer is a disease due to unregulated growth and division of mutant somatic cells. That's the formal um, definition. Uh, I like mine, which is shorter, but it's good enough. So cancer occurs in several stages. First, you need a mutation that affects the control of cell growth. Next, the mutated cells will multiply and one of several things may happen. Um, usually what happens is our body's immune system destroys them. Woo, yay, we're fine. That's the usual outcome. Um, if the mutant cells grow uh, and our immune system doesn't kill them, another possibility is it will form a benign tumor. So a benign tumor stays in place and doesn't spread. And finally, the worst possibility is if the mutant cells grow and spread to other tissues, it's a malignant cancer. It's cancer. Now, here's just a, a little graphic that's trying to show how cancer cells start, <coughs> <coughs> excuse me, starts dividing. So you get a mutation in a cell, it starts growing un in an un unregulated manner, and um, once that starts happening, if they keep growing, they can become um, cancer. Well, they become cancer. Now, carcinogens are cancer-causing agents. Now, so we, we're going to look at a little bit of environmental factors in cancer and, and other things too. Um, there are mutagenic chemicals. We talked about those in the last chapter. Radiation can also cause DNA damage like thymidine dimers, things like that. Um, also, single and double strand breaks if the radiation is enough, has enough energy. And we also know that mutations can arise simply from DNA replication because DNA polymerases aren't perfect. Now, cells that grow and divide quickly are much more likely to develop mutations. Why? Well, think about it. Um, I'm 60 years old. Um, I've had a lot of cells that have grown and divide, divided over my lifetime. But some cells grow much, much faster than other cells. Usually, 80% um, of the cancers occur in epithelial cells. Now, epithelial cells doesn't just mean skin. There are epithelial cells that also surround organs and things inside you. But 80% of all cancers come from that particular um, cell type because it's a very rapidly growing um, cell type. So it's going to, over your lifetime, accumulate more mutations and slower growing cells. Um, two main types of genes. Uh, when mutated that can cause cancer. The first is called an oncogene. So oncogenes start out as proto-oncogenes, which basically means like a pre-oncogene. They're, they're a normal protein. It got this name because when they mutate, they can become uh, cancerous or cause cancer. And so um, the mutated form was called an oncogene. Um, now these are a little bit unusual. Um, they are dominant mutations. So it doesn't matter whether you've got a good copy on another chromosome, if you, another you know, sister chromosome. If you've got one bad copy, you're in trouble, all right? So only certain genes are oncogenes. There are also another class of, of genes that get involved in cancer too. These are normally, their normal purpose is to prevent cancer from happening in the first place. They're called tumor suppressor genes. And these genes have a negative effect on the spread of cancer. Um, they prevent it from curing and spreading. Um, here, you can have, uh, say, two copies that get knocked out. So now you don't have any good tumor suppressor gene at that locus. 
um, then you can end up being unable to suppress the genes that can cause cancer. Um, we figured out that viruses can cause cancer. It was actually kind of interesting. Um, there is a virus called the Rouse sarcoma virus. It causes a sarcoma, which is a type of cancer. Um, they figured this out a long, long, long time ago. Um, it's a retrovirus, and so that means um, it has mRNA as its, as its genetic material. It doesn't really matter, but um, these retroviruses um, occasionally will pick up <clears throat> what would be a proto-oncogene under normal circumstances, but if they pick it up, that, that gene that um, can cause cancer, when it mutates, called the oncogene, um, they can actually exist as a virus with that, and then if they get to a human and infect them, um, that oncogene can actually be inserted. And that's actually how they figured this out. Most of these um, uh, retroviruses, it's, not, it's fairly common that they'll pick up other genes. Once in a while, they pick up an oncogene, and that can cause problems. So it's kind of interesting, because what it will do is it'll pick up the oncogene, and then, like I said, it'll insert it in you, and what ends up happening is not going to go back where it belongs. So it's misregulated, and that's one of the things that you'll see that can cause um, a proto-oncogene to become an oncogene. Now, contact inhibition and transformation. So contact inhibition occurs as cells grow. They start to sense their surrounding, and when they start running into other cells, they stop growing. Transformation is a term that applies to cancer. What transformation means is a cell that normally exhibits contact inhibition all of a sudden now starts to grow and ignore the fact that it's touching other cells. So once a cell is transformed, it can become cancer. All right, so without the contact inhibition, the cells won't stop growing. And transformation prevents them from sensing that. So you can see in a little graphic, it's a, Everybody's being very nice, respecting each other's space, no pushing. But in cancer cells, um, they don't care, and they'll just keep growing and growing regardless of whether they're touching other cells. Now, how do you create an oncogene? Well, proto-oncogenes are the wild-type form of the oncogene. They're actually useful genes, and normally they don't cause any problems at all. Uh, but once in a while, something will happen and cause them to no longer be a useful, helpful protein, but they'll be one that's gonna cause cancer. Now, they are dominant. What does that mean? That means only one copy needs to go bad and you get, you have problems. So, <clears throat> so um, in some ways, it's a little bit easier to have uh, one copy get mutated rather than having, for instance, loss of function of two genes. It's much harder to have happen. So, um, a lot of the cancers are actually caused um, by proto-oncogenes getting turned into these dominant oncogenes. So they're dominant because what happens is after the change occurs, the protein has more function. So too much function is a bad thing. So the mechanisms for that are one, a mutation that increases the protein function. Usually that destroys with, you know, a regulatory region. You know, a lot of proteins do something and then turn off, do something and turn off. The regulatory region helps turn it off. So if you mutate that, you can't turn off the function anymore and it, and it just goes crazy. Another way that you can get too much function is you can have multiple genes, um, for instance, gene duplication events, or the gene can be moved from one chromosomal location to another. And if it's moved to another location and put right next to a strong promoter. Remember, promoters regulate mRNA synthesis. So now all of a sudden you're making tons of the mRNA when you're not supposed to. Um, you're more likely to um, develop cancer because now the proto-oncogene becomes an oncogene because now we've got a gate of function and there's too much of it. Okay, so how a proto-oncogene goes bad. So what I just talked about is shown in the um, little figure. This is uh, figure 14.8, it's the last slide. So proto-oncogenes can mutate and become a hyperactive mutant protein. We'll talk about um, one example of that. Or they can um, get multiple copies, uh, basically gene duplication events, 
that's also bad. That can happen during growth and replication of cells. Or the protoagonin gets moved next to a strong promoter, and therefore you make more protein. So you either make a protein that's hyperactive for function, or you end up making more of the proteins. All of these result in a dominant um, uh, phenotype, and that phenotype is bad because now our normally nice proto-oncogene, which is very useful, has now gone um, haywire and is making too much of it, and that causes other problems that um, lead to cancer.